So since last video I've done a bit more, I've got a bit more control over the lights. Um, I've made and fitted a nozzle wiping mechanism and I've got some doors. No back, no sides, no drawer front, but I've got some doors. So first off the lights, um, somebody has done a, a bit of an integration for Home Assistant for duet boards. Um, so it's, it doesn't expose the entire object model. But um, it gives a few sensors like um, hot end and bed active and standby temperatures and current temperature and so forth. And the print status, um, elapsed time and time remaining and things like that, which is, which is pretty good. Um, but it also gives um, position in terms of X, Y and Z, which are three comma separated values. So I've managed to um, make a custom sensor from that which gives me the Z position, which I've highlighted on this picture here. So I've got lights at the top shining down, light at the front shining back. And then I've got these two um, vertical lights that go on the leg shining front to back. But until the print gets more than, you know, kind of 100 mil, they're just going to be lighting up the underside of the bed. So I don't really want them coming on. It's a bit unnecessary. So what I've done is I've made an automation so that if once the Z height reaches something like 150 or 200 mil, then it will enable those lower lights to be controlled automatically um, like the others with motion. So that's the first thing I've done. And then the other thing I've done is I've added a, a, an input number. So the other three input things I got are called input booleans. And uh, so they basically have two states on or off. And I use those to enable automatic control for one for the top light, one for the front light, and one for the lower lights. So I've now added a slider, if you like, uh, which is an input number with a range of 0 to 100. And for that I can set the brightness that will be used when they come on an automatic control. Um, and then I've done another automation which sets that depending on the state of the sun. So when the sun comes up it sets that to 100%. So when the ambient is high the lights will be at 100%. And at sunset when the sun's gone down and the ambient light level is low they'll be dimmed to... 50% currently I can set it whatever I want but that's what it works. So in a nutshell I've got manual control over, I've got three lots of lights each one can be controlled on and off manually it, and the brightness can be set on and off manually um, they can automatically they can be set to come on automatically um, so they go off if there's no motion in front of the printer they'll come on if there is motion at whatever brightness level has been determined depending on the time of day and in the case of the lower lights they'll be controlled depending on the z height as well so that's it for lights i think i've finished so then i've made a uh, a mechanism for wiping the nozzle so as i've said before i use the nozzle um, as a z probe so for that I need to make sure there's no blobs of plastic on the bottom of the nozzle. So I, I, I heat the nozzle before I'm in Z, but also need to wipe it. So effectively I'll come up with this, which is just um, two bits of aluminium formed to make a clamp, which clamp a strip of silicon rubber. So what I've always used. It needs to be fixed to the frame rather than the bed, because I need to wipe the nozzle before I home Z. So if it was fixed to the bed, I'd need to home Z first in order to get the nozzle the right height above the wiper strip. So having it fixed to the frame, it's always a fixed distance in relation to the tip of the nozzle. Unless I put a longer nozzle on it, of course, will change the height end. But. Uh, and then uh, finally, I've sort of tarted up the dashboard so it now looks a bit more like this, which is a bit more easier to read. The... Um, the light controls are a bit smaller, don't take up so much real estate as it were. So now the homing sequence is to home all um, or to home Z. The first thing it does is it starts to heat the nozzle. 
then it will home X and Y and then it moves the nozzle to the front center of the bed while it's finishing heating the nozzle. The reason for that is sometimes um, if you've done a, a print at the end of the print, um, depending on the filament, but you could get quite a, a long bit ooze out as the nozzle's cooling down. So I like to move the nozzle to the front of the bed and then if there is a big bit hanging off, I can get rid of that before I actually wipe the nozzle. If you just wipe the nozzle, there's a chance that that could curl up and stick to the stick to the nozzle rather than getting wiped off. Um, what I haven't yet got around to doing, but I will do, is I spray the nozzles with molybdenum, molybdenum, molybdenum disulfide or some such, I can't remember. It's molly, it's molly slip. Um, anyway, um, here's, here's what the homing sequence looks like now. I've done some videos of it. So then finally I've got some uh, doors um, which you ain't going to see very well because they're polycarbonate and it's clear. <laughs> um, but here are some pictures. Um, so basically I bought some uh, polycarbonate, I had it cut to size 6mm solid polycarbonate. Um, I bought some hinges which are very similar to an IKEA um, cabinet we've got. Um, basically they just clamp around the glass or in this case polycarbonate and got a little pin sticking up. So I've made a couple of brackets, or four brackets actually, two each side, uh, to take those pins to, to form a hinge. And because the edge of polycarbonate can't be polished, um, then I've put a, a rubber U-channel around the edge just to sort of tidy it up a bit and make a bit of a seal. So that's as far as we've got now. Um, so I've ordered for the panels, the panels are on order, um, I've just gone for plain aluminium, it's about the cheapest thing I can find to make panels from. I'm just going for one and a half mil, which I'll just screw on. Um, I, I don't know what that's going to look like. I might need to paint it or cover it with something to make it a bit more wife friendly, shall we say. But you know, they're fireproof pretty much and um, it was cheap. Uh, I'll see what it sounds like. I it might, you can get sort of sound deadening pads that are like for automotive, you stick them on the inside of your boot lid and your door and stuff like that to uh, deaden it. So I could always stick some of them on the inside if it's uh, still a bit noisy or just see what it is. But yeah, so I'll get those bolt on a draw front and some handles, um, get those bits and bobs sorted out and it'll be, um, it'll be finished or as as finished as a printer ever is. So um, that'll do for now. And uh, thanks for watching. Hope you found something interesting in there. Until next time. Bye.